a second type of graph that we can look at to learn about speed. So look here. We have, this is a speed time graph, and we have data here, okay? So let's plot the data. So this is, we don't really know too much more about this graph, so we'll just call it a speed versus time. And we don't even know what object it is, so we'll just put speed versus time. So time always goes on the bottom. Yeah. And speed goes on the side, on the y-axis. this data it doesn't that doesn't really make sense let's just okay well you know what actually it does make sense oh, no. you can leave it I don't know I definitely I'm sorry I, can we cross it off that's fine if you cross it off that's fine okay. it's okay I know I do those things and then it's like oh I just did that why'd you do that okay so let's put our zero here now time we have to go up to ten so I'm going to go, like, say, two spots, number one. Two spots, number two. Two spots, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that worked out quite nicely. Two, two blocks uh, per one increment. Okay? And <laughs> look at that. I only have to go up to five for speed, right? So let's just pick, let's just say, okay, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten spots up is five. One, two, three. And supposedly there'd be ten, but we don't really need it. Okay, so at zero, it is five meters per second. At Two, it is five meters per second. At four, five meters per second. Look at that. I'm pretty sure six, eight, and ten. They're all five meters per second. And then slope. So let's draw our line of best fit. Well, our line of best fit is just connecting our dots right across. So offhand, what do you think this slope is? Zero, it is. Yeah, the slope is zero. It doesn't have a slope, right? Because remember we said slope is about steepness. Is this steep? No. No, I'm pretty sure that's flat. Well, my my line wasn't very good. Maybe it's yours was, but um, it is very flat indeed. So the slope is zero. So what does that mean? There is no slope. There is no slope. <coughs> what does that mean about this object's motion? It does not It is going five meters a second. It's consistent. It's consistent. Okay. What were you? It's not increasing. It's not increasing or decreasing. It's going one direction. Yeah. These are all. It's not accelerating. So almost we can think about it like it's on cruise control, right? It's all going one speed. So it is moving. This object is moving. But it's going on cruise. So we call that, so when we think about this, it's like cruise control or whatever. Or you guys said it's going, um, what did you say, like just the same 
I think Amy said consistent. So those words, when we think about all of that, that, all these words, when we talk about an object that's going on cruise, or it's at the same meters, or same speed, or it's consistent speed, the word we use to call that, we say that it is uniform, uniform motion. So I would say that this object is moving at uniform motion. So that word is kind of funny because when you think about if you had to wear a uniform, everyone looks the same, right? Uniform things are the same. So if so, an object has uniform motion, it's going the same. Okay, so what do you guys have on your last page? Yeah, this, what I have, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where? Oh, we already did that though, right? No. Oh, the next step would be to draw a line of best fit. We already did that because you guys are so smart. Calculating the slope of the line of a speed time graph would give us information about the motion of the object. So calculating slope, slope is our delta y over delta x. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if we... Yeah. Thanks. So if I had a point, I could say I had point 8 and 5, and then like 2 and 5. So if I took, say, I took this point and I took this point. They, I didn't have to take those points exactly, but that's what I picked. Okay. So 8 and 5 and 2 and 5. So say this, this one is x2, that's y2, x1, y1. So if I put that in then, I have 5 minus 5 divided by 8 minus 2. So that's 0 divided by 6. And this is meters. Uh, meters per second over seconds. I'll just make that a little more clear. So our y is speed, right? So it's meters per second. And our x is seconds. So it's meters per second over seconds. So then the seconds cross off and we just left with meters. Exactly. Well, actually, no, wait, it, meters per second per second. There's not actually any legitimate, uh, wait, the distance will be the next one. Forget what I said about meters. Okay, so our slope is zero, which means any time a slope is zero, that it's uniform motion. How did you get rid of the six? Like, where did it go? What, what six? Eight minus. Oh, zero divided by anything is zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we can also take this graph, though, and if we looked at area, then we would be able to find something different. So, I'll show you something here. Okay? So, look, this graph can also be used to determine the distance traveled by the object. You can determine the distance traveled by calculating the area. So I show you, I show you, watch this, watch this, okay? Are you ready? It's gonna be fun. So what you do, so if I'm trying to find distance, what, what letter is that? 
D. Okay, so say D is my question mark, so I write down D question mark. What is on my graph? What's on the y-axis? What, what letter? V. Which is v. v. What else do I know on my graph? T. So now, let's look at these variables. When I draw my triangle, okay, with these variables, v equals v over t, because the, the distance, the, the speed, and the time, these are all related together, right? In this formula that we know is v equals d over t. So what if I'm looking for d? V times t, right? So I know if I'm looking for d, it equals v times t. Watch this. Okay? So this v, what does it represent on my graph? The or, or the or and the y, right? That's my y, yeah. And this is my x. So if this is y and this is x, and look at here. Oops, that's not very straight. It's almost like this looks like a rectangle, right? Mm -hmm. So if that was a rectangle, I could say that's also length and width. So. If I take the length times the width, I get area, which is also distance. That's cool. Okay, so I'll, I'll explain it one more time. So if, if my formula is d equals v times t, and my area of my graph equals v times t, because I know area of a rectangle, is length times width. If area, if D equals V times T and area equals V times T, then I can say, well, if I find area, that means I found D. So distance is area. For this type of graph. So what kind of graph is this? This is a V T graph or a speed time graph. So for a speed time graph, the area gives you distance. Not for every graph. Just a, just a speed time graph. So just like a straight area. Well, it could be a triangle. Oh, okay. be, but then you'd have to go base times height. Divide, by two. divide by two. So the distance is 50? Because you went... 10 times 5, yes, 50 what? Meters, right? So let's do it. So area is equal to our V, which is 5 meters per second, times by 10 seconds. Now our seconds cross off, and we're left with 50 meters. Woohoo! So the area is 50 meters and the distance is 50 meters. Because I found area, I know that I found distance. Cool, right? What? So travel 50 meters in a 10 That's right. Yeah. 